everybody, my name is Pamela Coey and I um, thank you for watching this video. I am an artist who has been painting for about 30 years now and I live in Hamilton, Montana. Um, in my studio I really enjoy working in four basic mediums and this particular video is going to talk about cold wax and oil. I think there are a lot of artists out there who are very interested in this medium and um, the numbers of people who are looking to find information about this medium grow by the numbers I think every day and um, so I just wanted to show you some of the tools that I use and behind me are a couple paintings that I started um, just using black and white a lot of times I, I will start a painting um, in this way and even though I know that what you see behind me will be covered up um, because there are many successive layers that happen I do like to start sometimes with a really bold, you know, beginning. It, it's exciting, it's fun, but then I try not to get too attached to it because I know it's going to disappear. So with that, thank you again, and let's take a look at some of the cold wax and oil tools that are used in a studio. So these are just some of the ones that I tend to use. I have um, spatulas here. You can see um, this is a, a rather small one, but I love this size. You can see it's not really that much bigger than my hand. Um, and palettes, palette knives come in all different sizes, but um, this is one that I found to be like such a great size that I kind of got several because when you're working with uh, cold wax and oil paint and you're mixing it's really nice when you have a couple different ones so you don't have to keep wiping off and cleaning that one and you know and then using it again and then wiping it off and cleaning it again so those are my palette knives and then I also love these rubber tools um, they're like silicone shapers I think they're called and like this is a one and a half inch flat I've got you know half inch flat one and a half inch flat two inch flat um, these are really great tools for um, moving the cold wax and oil around and I will be doing demos later on to show you kind of how I like to use them. And of course there are brushes like, you know, like this one. This is kind of a smallish one. Right now I'm kind of having a hard time finding large brushes for working large scale, but um, anyways, this is just one particular brush that I have and I like. And um, this particular tool here is a Messermeister tool. It's really sold um, to be like a bowl scraper. You can see from the shape that it has like that bowl curve and you know, imagine you can really um, scrape frosting out of a bowl, but in my case I like to use it for cold wax and oil. And it has like a metal piece inside of it um, that gives it a really firm uh, sort of ability to scrape. And so when I put cold wax on a panel, it's really great for scraping back or for, you know, putting paint on. And, and again, that, that's another day and another demo. <laughs> I have a couple here. Um, it's nice, again, to have, sometimes when you have favorite tools, it's nice to have more than one, um, which allows you to kind of keep in the flow of things and keep going and not having to spend a lot of time cleaning your tools, going from one color to another. Here are some other tools that I really enjoy using in cold wax and oil. Uh, some of these tools are for putting paint on and other tools are sometimes used for taking paint off. It's always an additive subtractive process in the type of painting that I like to do. And in this case, uh, even though you may see that I have some of these wonderful drawing tools, um, I have a Lyra here. This is the, the fat sort of pencil that comes in, oh, uh, 6B, 2B, probably 4B in terms of softness. <clears throat> and these can be ordered online, you know, various places, but they're, they've got a really nice thick tip, as you can see. Um, but what happens when you use a tool like this and you draw into wet paint, it kind of becomes a subtractive tool. You're lifting paint and taking it off. Other times if the board is dry uh, and you're, you're just say activating the canvas, I'll use this to add. So again, a tool like this, even this, can be additive and subtractive. And then I have um, other tools here like these, these woodies which are wonderful. Um, they're water soluble 
uh, and they've got a really thick tip as you can see and they come in all different colors but I tend to love the black I like really uh, dark blacks and what else I've got the occasional RNF pigment stick you can see this one's almost half gone and because they're very calligraphic and gestural they're fun to use uh, without really having to blend them with other things um, including cold wax and they're made with a bit of beeswax in them so you really don't need to add things to them really just an assortment you can see here I have duplicates uh, sometimes they're different uh, softnesses of the lead anywhere from an 8H to an 8B so the H stands for hard and the B stands for soft and there's a wide range when you buy pencils in a kit you know you'll see those on there. also helpful to put on wax move it around are these rollers and you can see um, they're some are small and some are a very soft rubber this one's a soft rubber made by Innovart and I really like this one and then this one is sort of in between in terms of size and the rubber on this one is it's pretty soft so that's something to keep an eye on is the hardness of the rubber because the softer it is, like this one's a little harder, the softer it is, um, a little bit easier to put that wax onto your panel or your, you know, your canvas um, surfaces. Well, I guess that's going to be another discussion because surfaces really matter when you're working with cold wax and oil. And then I also have things like this paper, um, but that's just an example of one type of paper I use. I also use newsprint, palette paper. Um, really any kind of paper which can be used to put on, paint, take it off, and also to mask. Here is some string that, you know, one, one particular thickness here, but I have several different thicknesses. I like to play with string for texturing. And I guess that's just a few more tools. Thanks, everybody.